Hello everyone and welcome to an exciting video today as we take a first look at the newly released TCA Captain's Pack Airbus Edition from Thrustmaster. In this video we're going to go through the entire product in some detail as well as a tutorial on the actual setup of the product so you should have it working seamlessly within Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this new Captain's Pack encompasses the entire range of Thrustmaster's Airbus TCA products. We have the side stick, we have the thrust levers, and we also have the TCA Quadrant add-on, which is your spoilers and your flaps, parking brake, landing gear, etc. Which in the past have actually been quite uh, infamously difficult to get a hold of, but this new Captain's Pack bundle has everything you need to be able to fly your Airbus in the simulator quite realistically. We'll also go through the full setup in the fly-by-wire A32NX, setting all this up on the tablet and calibrating all your detents. So obviously when it arrives, very exciting, and you can see that it's all obviously packaged nice and securely. I like the little uh, remove before uh, flight on, uh, on there. And I was impressed to see as well that on uh, on opening that the thrust levers and the add-on pack, the spoilers and the uh, and the flaps were actually already connected up together. So one less thing for me to do there. What really impressed me about the side stick was the weight of the uh, device. It was really rather heavy and with the rubber grips on the bottom, it meant that it's not going anywhere when you're flying. It will sit nice and happily on your desk without any issues uh, of it sliding away. Of course, the product comes with full documentation and as you can see here, you do also have the ability of buying the thrust levers again separately which would then increase your capability to have four separate thrust levers for of course if you're flying a, a four engine jet such as the Airbus A380 or the 747. The side stick is also ambidextrous. It can be uh, turned to suit either the left-handed flyer or the right-handed flyer. This is easily achieved by removing the two panels and then you can replace those with opposing buttons depending on whether you prefer to fly in the right hand seat or the left hand seat of your aircraft. Very easy to do. You will need a screwdriver that is not shipped as part of the package though. Remember, if you do decide to switch flying hands, then you will need to look at the bottom of the side stick and flick the switch so you are either flying to the right-handed or left-handed side. The side stick is also a one-on-one -on -one replica of the one used in the real aircraft, so size-wise, it is exactly the same. Coming on to the thrust levers and the add-on pack, Obviously, these are slightly smaller than those in the real aircraft, but they are at a scale of an 8 to 10 size, so they just fit quite nicely and obviously still give you a very realistic feeling. The fact that you've got so much control over your aircraft engines and uh, flaps and spoilers now means that when flying in the simulator, particularly when you have a 2D screen in the simulator, not having to look down at the pedestal and taking your eyes off the uh, FMAs and the screens, etc., uh, is really really nice you've just got now a tactile feel for everything and all of the switches and uh, everything feel really nice and solid the only thing that I'm uh, not quite sure of how to use in uh, in the Airbus 320 is the auto brake switch now obviously you can switch this low medium and uh, and high but of course as you know the A320 doesn't actually have a visible switch it just has the buttons uh, by the uh, by the clock and the landing gears all of the switches and buttons etc feel really great these two buttons just here aren't actually really buttons in uh, in the real aircraft they're actually little, little lights which will illuminate if there's a there's a fault but uh, Thrustmaster have turned those into buttons and you can assign those to uh, to whatever you want uh, but as you can see there's the little uh, rudder trim and a nice little spring action there the parking brake doesn't lift up as it does in the real aircraft but again, not to not to worry. It still feels nice and strong. Same with the flaps lever. That actually doesn't lift up, but it does feel nice and solid as uh, as you move it. 
The spoilers lever comes set with a range of detents on it. Now, the real spoiler lever in the A320 only has a detent at the halfway point. Uh, so I'm going to show you how you can actually uh, get rid of those detents uh, in a little while. The thrust levers move really nicely and the detents are very, very solid in that. So there's not going to be any mistaking when you push them forward and pull them back to where you want them to be. Activating reverse idle and reverse thrust is done very realistically and obviously they snap back into place when you push it back to idle and you've also got the auto thrust disconnect button there on the side. The only real setting up then you have to do before connecting everything up to your PC is you need to connect the add-on pack to the thrust levers. Now this is done by using the cables provided. One goes there and one goes there. Two cables, put those together and everything is linked up. I then wanted to remove the detents from my spoilers lever, so it was a little bit more realistic compared to the real aircraft. Now, the way to do this, you can see the top line is showing next to a groove setting. So, in order to turn it around, all you need to do is remove the screws, and then we can simply lift out the setting just here, swap that around, a little bit small and fiddly but once that's uh, once that's done and in place you'll now see that the line l matches up with a, a smooth straight line which basically means that there is now no detents one of the things that i did find that was each of the levers the spoilers the thrust and the uh, flap lever were actually quite free moving which meant that it would potentially be rather easy to catch them so i wanted to try and make these a little bit stiffer Thankfully, Thrustmaster have thought of this too, and they've made it really, really easy. All you need to do with a crosshead screwdriver is turn these clockwise to increase the tension and level of resistance within the, within the levers, and of course, the opposite is true as well. So I went ahead and tightened all of these up, and once I'd done, they really were not too stiff, but much more realistic, so that you can't just nudge them by mistake. You need to make sure you put some force on them to make sure that the levers move and that was particularly true of the spoilers lever after removing that detent setting. After I was happy with the setup of the hardware I then connected the side stick to the PC using the USB cable. The driver is automatically downloaded for this one so you don't need to do anything else and as you can see as soon as that's connected Windows will find it and it's all calibrated and working nicely right from the off. Next then, it was time to connect up the thrust levers, but before you do that, you do need to go to the Thrustmaster website and download their driver for this product. Once that's all done, you'll then be asked to connect the device up, and upon opening the properties, you'll be able to see that everything is already configured and working, or at least it certainly was for me right out of the box. You've got your thrust levers and, of course, all of the other switches, and you can just go through and test that everything, uh, everything is working, and you can see an input registered as you go through and press all the different switches and dials. And make sure Enable Virtual Buttons is turned on and checked to make sure that uh, everything works correctly. Once we're happy with that, let's jump in the simulator and have a look at how well this product works. So with everything connected up, I've simply launched into the simulator in the fly-by-wire version of the Airbus A320. And I'm going to go and bring up the menu just to see how this is all set up. On opening the controller options, I was quite amazed actually to find out that the Thrustmaster A320 side stick and the Thrustmaster throttle quadrant had already been detected and selected for me and a default setting was already uh, waiting for me. Now, Azobo have already given us a default profile for this setup, so I then wanted to go in and check how everything worked in the aircraft without touching anything. Obviously, we can go in a little bit later and refine any sort of key bindings and things for what we want, but I wanted to see what the default setting was like and just how well it was going to work without me having to go and tinker around with things. So I jumped right in, set up uh, cold and dark at the gate, and I just wanted to see if I started moving things on the throttle quadrant, would they move 
in the simulator. And sure enough, yes, they did. Uh, so thrust levers worked perfectly, spoilers as well, of course the flaps did, all with the set detents automatically detected and working. I also then had a quick play with the engine starter switch and engine one and engine two, both all working. And going through everything, it seemed everything is already set up with nothing to add on the thrust lever setting side of things. All of this works exactly as it should out of the box. The only thing then I did go in and edit with regards to key binding is the two little buttons which are beneath the engine starter switches. I key bound one of those to toggle arming and disarming the spoilers and with the other one I set to the anti-ice. So they became useful straight away because sadly with the spoiler lever on the Thrustmaster set you can't lift it up to uh, arm the spoilers as you would do uh, in the real aircraft. So those two buttons straight away now uh, now in use but I did have to set those up myself. Let's go over now and look at calibrating these thrust levers with the fly-by-wire aircraft using the EFB or tablet. So now I'm going to take you through the calibration setup in the fly pad of the fly-by-wire A32NX. From the tablet we need to go down to the settings which is the bottom left cogwheel and then if you go to sim options and at the bottom there you have the detents and calibrate tab. Now this is already calibrated uh, for me but I'm going to go through the procedure that uh, that I did for setting up the uh, the Thrustmaster throttle set and it is straight out of the box with nothing other than the driver download which I spoke about previously being done. So any of the settings that you see here in the control page, hang on if I just bring those up, uh, so if I go here and then onto the sensitivity settings here, these are all default. I have not changed these at all. So as you can see, if I move the uh, thrust levers, they are exactly where they are when I came and uh, just installed it for the first time. Of course, you've also got the spoilers lever and uh, and the flaps lever as uh, as well. So let's uh, come out of that because we're going to leave it exactly where it is is and just one final note actually before I leave this page you can see that thrust idle at the moment is right bang in uh, in the center if I then want to go into reverse idle you can see that's uh, housed just there and then the full reverse is right down at the bottom but again you don't need to mess with these because they are exactly where uh, where they are out of the box so let's just uh, go back to the fly pad Okay, and as I'm moving the uh, thrust levers all the way to the top and down to the bottom detent, the idle detent, you can obviously see that they're showing there. And because we have two independent axes, make sure that that is ticked. We've also got a reverser as well with the uh, Thrustmaster set, so make sure that is turned on as well. So the way that I went and calibrated these is, let's just see if we can get you in a little bit closer. There we go. So what you mustn't do is have a look at your thrust levers in the sim, the virtual thrust levers. When you're calibrating them, this doesn't matter. These can be anywhere. doesn't matter where they are. All you're bothered about is your physical thrust levers that you've got your hand set on. So let's go back over to the tablet. So now I have put my thrust levers in the idle gate, so right down at the bottom. So I'm then going to go to idle, and then I'm going to click set from throttle set from throttle and apply I'm then going to move it up to the next gate which is the climb gate I'm then going to select that set from throttle set from throttle and apply now up to the flex and then select it set from throttle set from throttle and then of course all the way up to toga and if we go up there we can set from throttle set from throttle again so now all of those gates have been set the toga the flex the climb and the idle and you can check that those are working by then after you've done that going to check the sort of virtual ones here in the simulator so there's idle I can hear it clicking nicely into the climb gate flex 
and finally toga. And then we need to do exactly the same with the uh, couple of reverse gates. So if we bring that all the way down, let's not try and set it on here. Again, we're going to go back to our tablet. And if I now pop this into the reverse idle position and then select it, and we can set that from the throttle, set that from the throttle. And now I'm going to go down to the lowest setting reverse full set from throttle and set from throttle okay so now I can see that I've got a little message it says reverse full overlaps with reverse idle so the reason for that is because I forgot to change this so let me just go back to reverse idle set that set that now I'm going to go down to reverse full set that again there we go and I'm still getting a message telling me that reverse idle and then it tells me whereabouts that is overlaps with idle if you're getting a slight overlap of these two detents well then what you can do is you can reduce the dead band so let me just show you so at the moment these two are overlapping each other so if I go to reverse idle and if I just decrease that, let's go 0 0.02 and set that and then set this one and set that. Uh, actually, I've made a slight mistake here because my physical thrust levers are still in the reverse fall position. So it's very easy to sort of get yourself confused because there's a lot to make sure that you remember you do as you're going down. The first four are relatively straightforward because they are quite a way away from each other in the gates. But let's now just go back to uh, reverse full and I know my thrust levers physically, I've got my hand on them, are right down at the bottom. So let me just reset that again. Set that reverse, set from throttle, set that one from throttle. Now let's go up to reverse idle and I need to remember to actually select reverse idle. Let's set that now and that one. And suddenly, because I have reduced that dead band, well, now I haven't got a problem. Now I haven't got a problem. The tablet will allow me to click apply and also save and apply. Make sure you select uh, both of those. Then you know that what you've saved will, uh, will be working. Now, when I go and check all of these detents out, I can go idle, climb, flex, toga, all the way back down to idle. And then if we want to go into the reverse gate, we can go either reverse full or we can go just to reverse idle. And there they are. So that's how that has been calibrated using the EFP and that will work nicely now meaning that because of the way the thrust levers are set and they're really really solid it means that we can quite happily no longer have to look at our thrust levers as we're flying we can concentrate on the FMA's navigation display etc what's happening in the general flight deck picture and with my hand on those thrust levers I know instantly whereabouts I am without having to pan the screen around so nice and easy to set up and uh, thanks to the fly by wire team for making that uh, pretty straightforward the only thing left for me to do after this was to start flying around with my new side stick and become accustomed to obviously using this rather than the hardware that I had been using previously it does take a little bit of getting used to but it is fantastic now after you've done that, of course, you've got, uh, I think it's 16 buttons on the uh, on the side stick, which you can obviously set to anything that you want. The red button is usually used for the autopilot disconnect. That's set by default. You've got a hat switch on the side stick as well, which by default is set to different points of view. I wasn't completely happy with that, so I went and just amended what, the, uh, what that could do. I use that now for my custom views. But then, as for all the other buttons on the... Um, on the side stick 
it's entirely up to you and of course with all the different keybinds available in Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, the possibilities are endless I've set mine to control some of the lights because anything that's on the overhead panel of course when you're flying you uh, you don't want to be having to pan up to have a look at it uh, it's easier just being able to press the button on the side stick uh, so you know that it, it's there one nice little thing that I have set up is the uh, thrust wheel on the side stick I've actually set now to my trim wheel so so I can set the trim wheel semi-realistically now when flying. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you found that video useful. If you have got any questions regarding this hardware setup from Thrustmaster, then please do get in touch. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have had this recently, let me know what do you think of the product. I personally think it's fantastic and all my flights and live streams now will be conducted using this setup. Big thanks to Thrustmaster for uh, releasing this full Captain's Pack edition. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.